Okay, so this video was recommended to me by one of my students a few years ago, and since then I have used it in every single class I've ever taught. All right, it gets a little weird, so buckle up, but um, I think by the end of this video, you're going to have a much stronger understanding of fractions and how and why they do what they do. The weird number. The story concerns a strange event that took place in a little town nestled in the mountains, a little town inhabited only by natural numbers. So already I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and we're going to talk a little bit about the vocabulary involved here. The narrator says that this village is inhabited only by natural numbers. Now natural numbers are positive whole numbers like 1 or 5 or 7 or 12, okay? Zero sometimes is included and sometimes not depending on who you ask and what the situation is, but the numbers we've been talking about on this channel so far have been a little bit broader than that, right? We started with natural numbers, but we have since expanded into negative numbers as well. So the group of numbers that we are talking about in this channel are called integers. Integers are just like the natural numbers, but it also includes the negative ones. All right, let's keep going. Whenever the townspeople gathered together, rumors were exchanged. Rumors that other numbers lived in the dark woods beyond other the Other numbers? At that time, nobody worried about robberies because if, for example, five stole something, he would always take five of whatever he stole. There was no special reason. That was just how he did things. No special reason, just how he did things. There are going to be a couple of more examples of this, but this confuses me because they never really talk about whether this habit extends only to theft or is it everything, right? I believe the chief of police is named 763, 763. So, I mean, obviously, hopefully he's not going to go around robbing places, but does this mean that every morning for breakfast, 763 eats 763 eggs? Inquiring minds must know. All right, moving on. And seven would steal seven things, and ten would steal ten things, no more, no fewer. And because of this, the thief could be easily identified. So there weren't any robberies, and no one bothered to lock things up. But there were robberies at one point, because clearly seven and five and ten were all ca caught for robbery at some point. One day, there was a robbery. Nine, who is the baker, rushed over to the sheriff's office. 763, who is the sheriff, leaned back in his chair yeah. and asked Nine what was stolen. Uh, just, a, just a little piece of bread. One piece of bread, said 763. I can't believe it. One is the mayor. He would never steal. Uh, no, no, said... Notice that 763 doesn't have a mouth, by the way. The, the cigar just kind of goes off to the side of him. Nine. Not not one piece of bread, a little piece of bread. Not one piece of bread, but a piece, said 763. What kind of nonsense is that? I'll show you, said Nine, then you'll understand. 763 hurried over to the bakery shop and was amazed at what he saw. Only a part of one loaf was missing. He couldn't imagine who could have taken it. One would have taken one whole loaf. Two would have taken two whole loaves, but none of the numbers would take less than one whole loaf. All right. If no number can take it, then no number did take it. But someone did take it. Someone or something. Bum, bum, bum. So yes, we are going to begin looking at the world of um, fractions is a sort of simplistic term. We're going to use the term rational number. And uh, I'll go ahead and pull that up right now. A rational number is not like a number that can think logically, all right? We're not talking about that kind of rational. A rational number is a number that can be made from the ratio, that's where the word rational comes from, is ratio, of two integers, one divided by the other. That night, 763 and 9 hid in the back of the bakery. Ooh, a stakeout. And waited. Suddenly, a little creature in a black cloak crept in through the door and scurried over to one of the cakes. It cut the cake into three whole pieces 
and took two and scurried out, leaving the third piece behind. Gas. 763 and 9 ran after the strange creature. 763 caught it by the cloak and pulled it off. 763 and 9 stepped back in horror when they saw what was beneath the cloak. It looked like a miniature 2 on top and a miniature 3 on the bottom. It's horrible! Street 9. Okay, all right. First off, I love this scene because the class cracks up every single time, right? Because this is this is what people think when they see a fraction. They think it's horrible. But let's go back and take a look at this creature. So we have here a 2 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. Okay? Now, I want you to take note of the shape of this fraction because it's actually a very good demonstration of what your fractions should look like. There is especially with fractions like one half and three quarters, a very strong temptation to use a diagonal slash as your fraction bar, for example. But it really works better if you do it just like it's done right here on this video with your top number directly over your bottom number with a horizontal bar in between. And yes, I'm aware that the top of a fraction is called a numerator and the bottom of the fraction is called a denominator, but I always felt that those were overcomplicated words for very simple topics, so I'll probably stick to just top number and bottom number if that's cool with all of you. Anyway, so we're going to skip ahead a little bit. They track two-thirds here down to a barn, and the next morning, the entire village is at the barn ready to meet this creature. So we will go ahead and skip ahead to 410 and we'll go from here. In front of the barn and suddenly the barn door began to open and a strange creature emerged. But it wasn't the same one that 9 and 763 had seen the night before. Hmm. It looked like a miniature 4 on top and a miniature 6 on the bottom. Now yes, some of you have already seen to the end of the video and have already seen to the end of the plot, but you know, hold your comments until the end of the video so that everyone else can enjoy as well. I... I'm sorry if I disturbed anything, it said. I live in the dark woods beyond the mountains. I wanted to see what was on this side of the range. What about that other thing? asked Nine. What thing? asked the strange creature. It had a two on top and a three on the bottom and it, it stole my bread and cake. Oh, that's two-thirds. I didn't know he was here, too. He's a real scoundrel. Uh, uh, real scoundrel? Are there many others like you in the woods? Yes, of course, sir. What do they look like? Well, said the creature, there's one half. He has, as you say, a one on top and a, and, and a two on the bottom. And five-fourths has a five on top and a four on the bottom. So I'm going to pause here again because we have in our in our language, this weird distinction between proper and improper fractions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to erase all of that from your vocabulary if you can. A fraction is a fraction. But yes, it's true, and we'll talk about this in a later video, that this uh, fraction here could also be changed into a mixed number, one and one-fourth. And I'm called four-six. Is there? Asked five. A creature in the woods with a with a five on top and a five on the bottom too? Uh, no, not in the woods, said four six. He's he's right here. Where? Right Where? there. Where? But that's one, our mayor. Oh, yes, he could also be called five fifths, said four six. If nine would bring some cakes from the bakery, I'll explain how. Now this cake is for me. Mm. Uh, so I would cut it into six equal pieces and eat four of them. If you gave the cake to that scoundrel two-thirds, he'd cut it into three equal pieces and eat two of them. Now, I think that some of you can see now that four-sixths has given away the game here, right? It's going to take the other numbers a while to realize it, but let's let's watch that um, little sequence again and see if you can figure out if you haven't yet how four-sixths here has has just given himself away This cake is for me mm. 
Uh, so I would cut it into six equal pieces and eat four of them. If you gave the cake to that scoundrel two-thirds, he'd cut it into three equal pieces and eat two of them. You see it? And one half would cut it into two equal pieces and eat one of them. Five-fourths would need two cakes. He cut each cake into four equal pieces and eat five pieces. Four-six then asked five to cut a cake into five equal pieces. Then four-six said, Tell me one, how many pieces of that cake would you eat? Why, well, I said one, I, I'd eat the whole cake, of course. So this goes to the question I asked at the beginning of the video, which is, does this extend to things outside of theft? And it looks like Mayor One here would indeed eat the whole cake. I know this isn't the point, but how, how, how does this village manage to keep enough supplies to keep 736, their chief of police, fed? I must know the answer. Right, because that's the, that's the most bizarre thing about this video, right? All right. No more interruptions from me, at least for the next 30 seconds. But how many pieces is that? Well, it's five pieces. Exactly, said four six. That's five fifths. Five fifths is one of your forms. If you really concentrate, you can change forms so that you'll have a five on top and a five on the bottom. So one concentrated and concentrated and he became a five on the top and a five on the bottom. Now, before we move on, if we recall that this, this fraction bar that's between the top and the bottom means divided by, this should hopefully be pretty, pretty natural, right? Five divided by five is one. Anything divided by itself is one, right? If I have five things and I put them into a pile of five, that's exactly one pile, right? So anything divided by itself is one. This mayor one can take the form of any number divided by itself. Well, except zero, because zero is a special case, but we're not going to deal with that just now. Uh, but his wife, 186, was so upset to see her husband in this state that he changed back immediately. You see, said 46, you're a rational number, just like me, and like all the numbers who live in the dark woods beyond the mountains. So again, all of the natural numbers, and indeed all of the integers, can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Even a number like 10 is just 10 over 1, right? 10 divided by 1 is 10. And that will be important once we start dealing with fractions when it comes to addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. But what's a rational number, asked one. Well. Any number that can change itself so that it has a natural number on top and a natural number on the bottom is a rational number, explained 4-6. Can I do that too, asked 5. Certainly, said 4-6. All natural numbers are also rational numbers. Pick a bottom number. I'll choose 3. All right, said 4-6. You eat 5 cakes. So we'll let 3 cut each cake into 3 equal parts. Now, how many pieces will you eat? Let's see, said five. I'll eat uh, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Fifteen pieces. Now, what this is going to say, of course, is that five is the same thing as fifteen over three. But I want to take a quick look at this from a more mathematical perspective, okay? What if I was to take the fraction, the rational number, five over one, and I was to multiply it by the rational number three over three, okay? Well, if you have done multiplication with fractions before, you know that when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across the top, which gives us 15 on the top, and straight across the bottom, which gives us three on the bottom, okay? Now, that gives us a final answer of 15 over three, but take a look at that three over three that we multiplied by. We just found out from um, our friend four sixths here just a moment ago that three over three is just another name for mayor one. So if I take five over one and I multiply it by one, I'm not actually really changing anything about it, right? 
So, one of your forms is 15 over 3, said 4, 6. Because when you cut each cake into three equal pieces, you eat 15 pieces. And it was true. For with that, five changed into 15 thirds. But three, his girlfriend fainted, so he changed right back again. Now that's just the same joke again. That's just lazy writing. Well, said four, six. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause because there's a little bit of fluff and I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Uh, four, six is gonna say, okay, I'm off, uh, have a good one, take care, and, and is gonna take off into the forest. But, at some point, 763 is going to think, wait a second, there's still a thief around, and we're going to go ahead and skip ahead to that. What do you mean? I just have a hunch, said 763. Look at this piece of cake. If we cut it into six equal parts, our friend 46 would eat four of them. That's right, agreed 9. So, we'll put four pieces on this tray. Now, asked 763, how much would two-thirds eat? Well, Nine said he'd cut it into three pieces and, and interrupted 763, eat two of them. Gasp again! But, but that's what four-six would eat, shouted Nine. Exactly. Then, said Nine, four-six is, is is the same as two-thirds, finished 763. I'm going after him. Maybe I can still catch the scoundrel. Throughout the years, many of the rational numbers from the woods came into the town to join the natural numbers, until the time came when all of them lived there. Even two-thirds came, and 763 continued to chase him. But two-thirds always found a new form to escape. Hey, really quick. What did two-thirds multiply his top part and bottom part by to get 18 over 27? Just think it over. From 763. Many years later, rumors came that strange new creatures were now living in the dark woods beyond the mountains. The rumors said that these creatures were numbers too, but they couldn't take the form of a natural number on top and a natural number on the bottom. It was said that some of these numbers were rational numbers, but some weren't. But no one could imagine what a number would be like that couldn't take the form of a natural number over a natural number. So, no one paid any attention to the rumor. The end. Now, at the end there, the narrator is very careful to mention that some of the new creatures out there in the woods are rational and some are not. And that's a really great detail to have caught because yes, there are rational numbers out there that are not a natural number over a natural number, right? We've been talking about integers this entire time. Negative one half is a rational number, but there are irrational numbers out there that specifically cannot be expressed as an integer divided by an integer. And we're going to get to that at some point during this very course. But for now, that is the 1970s educational classic, The Weird Number. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. And I hope you'll join me next time. Thanks for watching.